The cover page of One Punch Man Chapter 188, titled Appraisal, features a simple shot of Sweet Mask stretching. To begin, we would have the meeting of three figures at a shrine that was deep in the mountains of G-City. Yayan was looking over some paperwork, paperwork that seemed to be related to Sweet Mask. This was all the information they had managed to gather from investigating the area. Okama Itachi explained that absolutely nothing is known about Sweet Mask's history before his debut. Bushy Drill added that Sweet Mask's face is one that changes pretty frequently, so the possibility of plastic surgery could not be ignored. But despite this, there were no records of the hero undergoing any procedures in any medical institutions, so he wondered if perhaps this could be due to some sort of special ability. With that in mind, Iyayan figured that with an ability like that, Sweet Mask's history being unknown would make total sense. The idol hero could have been living a totally different life with a totally different face. This made Bushy Drill wonder if Sweet Mask might be a spy for the Neo heroes, which would definitely be some deep undercover work. But Bushy Drill needed to confirm something with Iyayan. He questioned if while they were knocked out during the fight, Iyayan truly felt a conflict within Sweet Mask's conscience. From what he remembers, in a situation where Sweet Mask could have solely targeted Duess, he instead wanted to kill her hostages too. With that in mind, all Bushy Drill could see in the guy was a bloodthirsty, homicidal maniac. And he's not too far off the mark there. In the original version of that fight, when Du S sent her mind control minions to attack him, Sweet Mask was completely unfazed by the fact that they were humans. He didn't stop charging towards the monster and actually slaughtered each and every one of the hostages, tearing them apart in brutal fashion. Even Du S, who is a monster herself, was stunned by the fact that there was literally no hesitation from him at all. Then, once she realized that her whip had no effect on him, she completely surrendered. Like, hands in the air, calling him master sort of surrender. And he killed her without a second thought. Now, this is of course, very different compared to the far more tame, revised version that came out 15 months later. So I can definitely understand why anyone may be confused here or may have missed that. In the new version of events, Du S launched her slaves all the same. And in his head, Sweet Mask saw a clear way to decapitate them all at the same time. He even made the motion to do so. But thankfully, using the blunt side of his sword, Iyayan was able to intervene and incapacitate two of the hostages, while Bushy Drill helped them out with the other three. They confronted Sweet Mask for a moment afterwards, but when he denied their suspicions and tried flipping things, Iyayan told his friends that they would look into him later on, which is what they're doing now. But even then, Sweet Mask wasn't immediately satisfied. He was intent on punishing all evil and those who commit it, even if it was against their will. Not only that, but he even considered anyone who would aid them, like Iyayan, Okama Itachi, and Bushy Drill, evil by association. The only reason he shifted was thanks to the hostages waking up from their mind control and proving themselves to be completely harmless. And moments after that, those same hostages were asking him for selfies and autographs. Also, because I'm sure a lot of you guys like her, Du S is still alive thanks to this altered timeline. Sweet Mask did still crush her head, but later on, she was able to miraculously reconstruct it. We're not entirely sure where she is right now, but like the disciples of Atomic Samurai, she has her sights set on Sweet Mask too. She is also the only one with definitive knowledge that a number one A-class hero is a monster. So yeah, we can expect some more from her at some point. Iyayan's response to his comrade was that during that time, on the surface at least, Sweet Mask looked like a monster that lacked a human heart. A monster that was struggling to control itself and get one somehow. Bushy Drill paused for a moment. He replied that evil people can pretend to have a heart. He wondered if it was a bit too early to trust the guy. Iyayan was certain that they'd be able to confirm that for themselves in the future by continuing their investigation. Looking down, the number two A-class hero admitted that he was able to sense earnestness in the man. He believed that might be because those who don't have something often know its value even more than those who do. His fellow disciples hesitated before speaking again. According to Okama Itachi, if that was the case, then all the more reason for them to keep their eyes on him. It was possible that these face changes of his were in fact not a kind of special ability and were instead a sign of monsterization. But that was quickly self-corrected as it actually appears as if the area around his face was changing physically on account of emotional agitation. Iyayan thought to himself for a moment. Okame Itachi wasn't sure how all this was going to play out, but hoped that the day would come when they could all be glad that they did not let Sweet Mask get his hands dirty. And that sentiment seemed to be enough for Iyayan. We'll then receive a shot of Sweet Mask amongst the crowd. He himself is actually very interested in Saitama at the moment, 
So yeah, there are a lot of characters converging on this point right now. Gaion wanted to continue their investigation and find conclusive evidence before approaching Atomic Samurai. After all, he was pretty busy with a reborn council of Swords Masters at the moment. Elsewhere, we'd be able to see this new council of Swords Masters as they stood before a monument. It read, Steal for the successive generations of the Council of Swords Masters. Praying alongside Atomic Samurai and Masinichirin were two new sword wielding faces. And the first one is a baddie. Peak character design. Murata has done it again and again and again. This man really cannot miss no matter the circumstance. This is Amahare's daughter, Yuta. She prayed that her father's soul would be able to rest in peace. Furthermore, she planned on annihilating all that remains of the Monster Association. She desired vengeance for being made to carry such a light coffin for her father. As a reminder, Amahare and Zanbai were dissolved by vomited Fuhrer Ugly in brutal fashion. Master Nichiren got violated too, but you'll see why he's still kicking in a moment. Before then, he'd apologize to Shido and Yuta. If they had only been stronger, these two would not be mourning their fathers right now. But Zanbai's son Shido corrected the old master. His father lived by the sword. He was certain that to have died in battle was something he was grateful for and cherished. In fact, because his father was a bodyguard, he was also sure that he'd be happy to know that the head of the council was able to survive. And this statement seemed to provide Master Nichiren some peace as well. From there, Atomic Samurai called out to him, wondering if his body was doing alright. The elder laughed while tapping on what was now a mechanical set of legs. It was clear that he was doing a lot better now. Standing, he'd express that just like the mastery of anything else, if you circulate your key into your weapon, it will become a perfect part of your body. And in doing so, Master Nichiren may be even more powerful than ever before. While tossing up an apple, he claimed the same to be the case, whether the weapon was a sword or an artificial body. Then, he unsheathed and twirled his blade in the direction of the same apple he had tossed. After that, he began pushing the blade back into its scabbard. The apple was still suspended in the air. Master Nichiren finally sheathed the blade once more. And just like that, the massive rock formation behind the apple was torn asunder, while the fruit itself remained unharmed and was still falling. Then it finally dropped. Shido was astonished. Lifting it, he couldn't believe that the master had avoided contact with the apple despite unleashing such devastation on the rock behind it. Yuta was speechless, but Master Nichiren corrected him. The apple had been cut. These two were really stunned. Atomic Samurai relieved the fruit from the young swordsman and wondered if they had never seen this before. He explained that thanks to Master Nichiren's insane skills, his sword is so fast that it doesn't even open up a cut. Apparently, the apple hadn't even noticed that it had been cut. This is some next level anime swordsman badassery. Shido wondered if this was some sort of Zen dialogue or something. He didn't understand it at all, but even still, it was really fascinating to him. Yuta was mesmerized. She was amazed that the peak of swordsmanship could reach such an incredible level. It was no different from magic to her. She was practically squealing with joy and was really excited to further hone her skills. Atomic Samurai was happy to see that the old man hadn't lost his touch, which reminded Nichiren of something. He had heard that Master Bang had retired from being a hero. These days, Bang is spending his time with his disciple Garo. Master Nichiren wondered what Atomic Samurai would do from now on. The Swordsman had joined the Hero Association because he wanted to compete with Bang, the Master of Martial Arts. Atomic Samurai thought to himself for a bit. Then with a smile, he admitted that Nichiren's words were true once upon a time. But these days, thinking of his S-Class comrades, he was grateful to have experienced things he couldn't get anywhere else. And besides that, among the top heroes, there was still a man beyond Bang, whose true power was completely unfathomable to him. And that man was King. Remember, Atomic Samurai was absolutely dog walked by Black S throughout his various forms. From what he understands, King was the one to annihilate the threat in an even more impressive state and emerge not only completely unscathed, but completely unfazed. Whether or not Atomic Samurai decides to continue being a hero now depends on his appraisal of King. This development fascinated Master Nichiren. It was from there that Atomic Samurai decided to take his leave. Master Nichiren acknowledged he changed in his fellow council member. Atomic Samurai was far more tolerant of others than he used to be. By placing himself in a situation with so many other strong individuals of varying sorts, he had come to understand the diversity of strength. Master Nichiren thought to himself for a little while, then chuckled. Maybe being a hero wasn't such a bad idea. 
which sparked Yuta's curiosity. And I really hope that these guys become heroes. That would be an amazing development for sure. Past all that, Saitama and Genos finally approached the gates of the Hero Association headquarters. Back by the Hero Apartment Complex, Forte was hard at work using nails and a mallet. Despite still having a messed up leg, he has successfully constructed a doghouse for Black S and Rover. Black S was not very happy to be living out his days in a doghouse, but he didn't have much of a choice at this point. All he could do was endure for the moment. But his tune quickly shifted when Forte brought out a generous helping of dog food. As the two ate, he thought to himself that he'd need to devote all his efforts to eating and increasing his cell count. At the same time, Saitama and Genos were approaching the scene. Forte was the first to notice Saitama's return, but he lowered his glasses to see who he was with. It was Demon Cyborg, Genos. The second he heard that, Black S frantically hid behind the doghouse in fear of being recognized by Genos. A reasonable fear, considering how the former army of Hims brutalized and tormented the cyborg. Saitama was grateful to Forte for making a place for Rover. The name Rover seemed to be peculiar to Genos, but he couldn't seem to definitively place the name. And I will say that it is pretty convenient that Bang retired and Saitama put Fubuki in the acquaintance zone the last time he saw her, since those two were the ones who actually faced Rover. I guess Saitama did too, but Rover was more like Clifford the Big Red Dog to him back then. The ever-rank-minded Forte wondered what the S-Class hero Demon Cyborg was doing here. Then he introduced himself as A-Class Rank 31, Forte. Saitama added the fact that Forte lives next door to him. Not seeing Black S peeking from the corner, Genos focused on the fact that Forte was his master's neighbor. And just like that, Genos had decided that he would need Forte to hand over his room. Without asking for consent or permission, he insisted that he would be bringing his luggage over later that same day and thanked his junior hero for his cooperation. Over in M-City, Atomic Samurai admitted that he had rung the intercom of his target's place several times, but it didn't seem like he was home at the moment. Unfortunately, it appeared to have been a wasted trip. Atomic Samurai and his top three disciples were at a place called Mao Sushi. More specifically, this was a conveyor belt sushi place. For those who may be unfamiliar, various sushi dishes are placed on a conveyor belt shared by everyone in the restaurant, and it's up to customers to pick what they want as they pass. Eion theorized that King might be out exterminating monsters or something. Atomic had hoped he'd be able to use his sword to determine King's caliber, but it looked like he'd have to try again some other time. After not having sushi for a while, Okama Itachi was overjoyed by the opportunity, but she drill scolded his comrade for being so jolly. Iyayan was looking forward to having the salmon, but as he said that, someone else grabbed it. This was disappointing, but Okama Itachi was unfazed and planned on trying the mayo corn. But that ended up being taken too. Iyayan, seeming to know his master's preferences, informed him that a big fatty tuna was on its way. Sipping his drink, Atomic casually instructed him to grab the tuna. Iyayan agreed, but at the same time, the meal was taken. Now Atomic had enough and was ready to make a scene. Iyayan begged his master not to, since the guy grabbing everything was a civilian. But when he turned to look, Atomic's eyes went wide and the stick in his mouth fell out. The three disciples were in awe as well. Seated just behind them was the man Atomic Samurai had been looking for. It was King. It seemed like he had gotten the upper hand and instead of being hunted, became the hunter himself. Not only that, but he had also antagonized his prey by claiming every dish they desired. Atomic made his way over. He admitted that he never expected to see King in a place like this. Then, he mockingly referred to him as Mr. Strongest Man on Earth. King barely responded. With the most imposing glare in the world, King looked up as Atomic Samurai admitted to having come here to meet him, and that he would like to talk for a minute. This is epic. King vs. Atomic Samurai was not something I expected, but man am I happy it is happening. I honestly thought Atomic Samurai got embarrassed enough during the Monster Association arc, but it looks like King is about to humble him even more. Leave your predictions for the next one in the comments below. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.